this Dan Studio tutorial. This will be the last tutorial in the series where we've been building this uh, scene for Veterans or Remembrance Day. In this video, we're going to put some final touches on our scene by adding some extra lighting to where it's needed in our scene to make sure that you can see everything we want them to see and give a bit more character to the dull areas of the image. As you can see, there's a few areas in here that are pretty dark and we want to make sure that those are lightened up. So since our scene is getting pretty heavy right now with all the effects we have going on, uh, we want to taper that down a little bit so we can actually see what we're doing when it comes to adding these other lights. So let's start by changing this from the eye ray draw style and putting that into texture shaded. And over in our scene tab, what I'm going to do is, as you can see, I've made some nulls here, which you can do by going create new null. And then I've put some things under each heading just so we can clean up our scene tab. So I have a fire one that I have our house flames, the embers, and the flames that are behind our running figure all under fire. Uh, we don't need those for this instance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down control and turn off the fire. Uh, we also have our uh, plain room volume that we don't need to see right now. So we'll turn that one off. We'll turn off the dust grid. Uh, we don't need the water disc. We don't need the clouds. Um, let's see here. We don't need the high pressure either for this uh, instance. We don't need the planes, but we obviously want to keep the soldiers because they're what we're going to be lighting up a bit more. Uh, we need the train and we also need the tank because we're going to be lighting that up more as well. So what we're going to do for this uh, is we're actually going to change our uh, viewport. We're usually in texture shaded uh, when we're not doing anything um, that's like our rendering that we have to see so we can keep it nice and smooth. But for this one, since we're doing lighting, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to put it into the filament PBR shader because that's going to allow us to see where these lights are going and what they're affecting. So now that we have that all done, we're, we know that we're going to light up three things. I want to light up the tank a bit more because it's still a bit too dark. I want to light up the front of this soldier that's running across the street a little bit. And I also want to give a rim light uh, to our foreground soldier because he was getting a bit lost as well. So for this, we're actually going to use point lights. We're going to use three different point lights um, for this particular instance. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is make sure nothing is currently highlighted. Go up to create and we're going to say create new point light. So for this one, what we're going to do is let's start with the tank. So I'll call this one, let's see, tank light. And then the label as well, we'll call that tank light and click accept. So there's our new point light. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to actually move this where we want it in the scene. So we're going to perspective mode. And let's get this moved over to our tank. Roughly about there. Go back to our main shot and let's go to posing. Select the tank light, and let's do a little bit of fine tuning here. We'll go to make that 1296. Our Y translate because currently looks like it's in the ground a little bit there. Let's change that and bring it up a little bit. There we go. And our Z translate, let's just change that a little bit. Change that to 469. Bring it a bit closer to the tank. All right. So Looks like we don't have much light coming off that as it stands right now. So what we're going to have to do is go to our parameters tab. And what we're going to want to do to this is the intensity here. So we're going to take this intensity from 100, bring that all the way up to 200. And then our luminous flux, we're going to change that from 1500 to actually 150,000. There we go. Now we can see what's going on, and that's giving us some light. And our temperature uh, is currently sitting at 6,500. 6,500 is usually uh, referred to as like daylight. Uh, I want this to be more orange. Uh, when we set up our previous luminance, it was around 1,500 for a nice orange. So I'm going to do the same thing here and bring that to 1,500 as well. So there's one light done. So what we can do now, if we want, is we can actually go back to our NVIDIA Ivory. See what that looks like real quick. Make sure it's the right color that we're looking for and that kind of stuff. And uh, if that fits the bill, then great. We can move on to our uh, 
our other two lights. There we go, there's our initial preview through uh, the IRA draw style. I think that's doing exactly what we want to do. We want this uh, explosion to be given off a bit more um, light onto the tank, and I didn't want to increase the luminance of these explosions because I liked how they looked already. So just by adding this to our scene really adds a lot to it. Uh, but one thing we want to do to that as well, because we don't want, uh, as you see right here, there's uh, our icon for it right now. If I were to unselect that dot um, in the actual main render, that is going to show up. So what we'll, get, what we'll do is we'll select the tank like go back to our parameters tab and go down to this render emitter and select that and make that off instead. So the emitter itself is not going to show up. So it's basically acting like a, uh, a ghost light. So now that that's done, we can go back to our filament PBR draw style. And to save us a little bit of time, uh, since we already did a whole bunch of settings on that initial point light, is I'm just going to duplicate that. So with the point light uh, selected in our scene tab, I'm going to edit, duplicate, duplicate nodes. So now I have a tank light 2 that's uh, actually in the same spot as the initial one because we just duplicated it and it put it in the exact same location. So what I'm going to do with that one is we're going to go back to our perspective view and we're going to move that light, the second light, over to our runner area. Go back to our main shot. So you can see now we have that secondary light right in front of him. Super bright at 150,000. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a few changes to the positioning of it as well as the brightness of it. So let's start by, first of all, changing the name. So we don't want to call that tank light 2 because it has nothing to do with the tank. So I'm going to call this instead the runner light. There we go. So now we have a runner. So now what I'm going to do with this one is go to the Loading tab, and let's move it into the position that we want. So let's go with a negative 81 on our x-axis. Let's go with, I don't know, 137 on our y-axis, make it a little bit higher. And our z-axis, let's go with 163, a little bit closer to them, because I'm going to actually go back to our parameters tab for the runner light. I'm going to take it from 150,000 I'm going to change that to just 15,000 instead. Make that light a bit more dull, so it's just going to light him up. I really wanted to put the emphasis on his face, that's why I raised it up like that. So now that the runner light is done, let's do one more. I, I like all the settings I put on this one, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my runner light selected. Edit, duplicate, duplicate codes. Now I have runner light 2. I'm going to change this one from running light two, I will call this one foreground. All right, so this one's gonna act as our uh, rim light. So what we're gonna do is go back to our perspective yet again. Let's find out where we are here. So I know that my guy is right here. Let's bring this over to our foreground guy right there. Go back to our main shot. There's the new light that we just put into the scene. So let's go to our foreground light and let's get this exactly where we want as well. So let's make this right there, 137 on the Y, and 318 on I think that should be good for what we're doing here. So now they have those three lights in place, let's go back to our MIDI iRay draw style. And let's see if those lights are doing what we want them to do before we turn everything else back on. So we already know that the tank's looking good, but I want to make sure that our runner's looking good and that our foreground soldier is looking good as well. If they are, then that's great. We'll th turn it back into our texture shaded draw style and turn everything else back on and then go back to our ivory draw style just to make sure that everything's looking good before we do our final render here. All right, so here's our preview. I actually quite like what's happening to our soldier right there. And I also like how minimal this one is. This guy's a bit uh, away from the action, so he shouldn't be as bright as everyone else. So I like that we just have that faint orange uh, rim on him. And I like how this guy is silhouetted in here as well. So that's all looking good to me. So let's change this back to texture shaded. We'll go to our scene tab, hold down control, and turn all those eyes back on that we had previously turned off. There's everything back on, back to our draw style, go to the media IRA, 
just see what's going on, make sure that we're happy with where everything's positioned, how everything is lit, where it's posed, uh, and make sure that's all good before we actually dedicate resources to doing a full render here. All right, so here comes our preview. I'm liking how that's looking so far. I think we could, uh, I think we could risk doing a full render of this one. So that being said, let's go over those render settings. Let's change this back to texture shading here real quick. And with everything on, let's go to our render settings. So we can click on all, and here's what we're looking at. So, uh, what I did initially when I set up my camera is I created a dimension preset uh, that was 12 by five. You can see that right here in the upper left hand corner, 12 by five. And I decided to make my width 2048 and Daz automatically calculated the height to be 853 at that ratio. So that was great. Uh, due to the heavy nature of my scene, uh, I have to increase my max samples to 15,000. And I increased my max time to 36,000 seconds as well. And I increased my rendering converge ratio to 99% from the default 95. That's all just been done just to make sure that uh, the render has the best chance of uh, being as complete as possible without too many fireflies or, or grade, um, gradient going on. Uh, so one other thing that I did do to this as well, just to give it the best chance possible is went down to the post denoiser enable, turned that on, and then I applied uh, the post denoiser start iteration at 1000 iterations. Uh, so since we're going to have 15,000 max samples at 1000, it's going to start adding a denoiser as well to try and clean up uh, the final render here for us. So with that being said, uh, and all of our render settings in place, we're going to hit uh, control R and get that render going. And there you have it, our final render in all its glory. I think we can be happy with this render and I feel like it does justice to the chaos that it makes up the hell that is war. So let's have a quick look back at where we started and how we got here over the course of the past five tutorials. I'd like to thank you very much for watching this tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did making it for you and uh, Happy creating.